Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tendulkar and these are the top stories at 1.30 p.m. Markets near the day's high as stocks continue their upward journey with the Sensex above 60,000 for the first time since April. Utilities FMCG lead gains while metals drag. Midcaps move in line. Arthi Drugs jumps after its plea for extension of anti-dumping duty on a key product, the antibiotic Offloxacin gets extended, confident of gaining additional market share because of the anti-dumping duty and taking it above 60%. The company's CFO, Mr. Patil, tells CNBC TV18. A resilient showing give, in Q1 gives g and Axles a boost. They expect Q2 to be slightly better than the first quarter, says MD and CEO Ranbir Singh. Adds that export order book uh, is very robust. Techno Electric surges over 10% on order wins worth 1,455 crore rupees. Welcome to uh, Medcap Radar for the markets. It's absolutely fantastic and spectacular. This has been an upward uh, sloping chart, as you can see. We had a gap up opening, the Nifty's built on it, and now we're up 100 points on the Nifty, while the Sensex has gained 364 points. In the last 30 minutes, it's the PSU banks which have started moving up. The Nifty PSU banking index should come up for you on your screen. You would see a spike in the last 30 minutes with names like PNB, Bank of Baroda, <coughs> State Bank of India. Uh, these are stocks where you can see uh, a significant up move coming through in the last 30 minutes. So that's clearly been the up move sector of uh, you know in the last 30 minutes but let's talk about the market technicals kush bora the founder of kushbora.com joins in for a technical check on the markets uh, kush afternoon uh, there is no stopping this market at no point of time have we seen any serious bout of profit taking the dips have been shallow they've been immediately bought into and for a while now we've been saying the markets are heading into resistance and perhaps it may make sense to be a bit cautious take money off the table but if you had done that you would have actually lost money uh, how are you reading the market up move uh, hi Rima, first off, thank you for uh, having me on the show. Uh, you almost stole, uh, you know, my lines, you stole, you know, words out of my mouth. This is exactly what, uh, you know, has been happening and this is what our view is. That, uh, you know, the consensus view is that uh, the markets are right for, you know, a bout of profit booking. But then that's been the view since 17,400 and 17,500 and we're staring at almost 18,000 now, correct? See, this is largely due to the FII's changing moment and chasing momentum. There's a very strong left out feeling that, you know, the uh, FII's have and this could keep Nifty afloat you know for a little longer and take it over 18200 levels before we see any kind of meaningful correction so if you have existing positions uh, you know my suggestion would be don't ask you know how high can the markets go just ride this momentum for now uh, keep your trailing stop losses in place don't be in a hurry to book profits if you're talking about existing positions then that's how you roll with trailing stop losses but for fresh entry you'd still want to play the momentum but here the only thing that you have to keep in mind is keep your volumes low and your risk management high if we talk about bank nifty well financials overall are one of the favorite sectors you know for the fii's so i'd be surprised if this bank nifty rally has a meaningful pause uh, before 40000 so that's the level that i'm looking at on bank nifty 38800 is where the support is same view here as the nifty any fresh positions should be light on size and heavy on risk management existing positions just you know write them with uh, trailing stop losses well, the Sensex did hit a nice round figure of 60,000. The question is, can the Nifty now hit 18,000 and the Nifty Bank, as you called it, perhaps heading towards that 40,000 level? We're just about 650 points away from that. Uh, but does it make sense to go long at the current juncture? Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, since 17,500, you know, everyone's been talking about a meaningful dip. Uh, we can wait and we can want the market to fall, but that's not how they, you know it rolls. Now, if you look at the data, 17,800 call option had a very strong base this morning. Uh, with the kind of up move we've seen, that's actually shifted to 18,000. Also, when the markets are in the momentum and you know there's so much uh, liquidity, you know I can call it now because of the FII buying. When there's so much liquidity chasing, you know so few stocks and the indices, then uh, you know levels become secondary and the trend and the momentum becomes primary. So even though I don't suggest you know uh, going all out and chasing momentum, if you want to play this because you know you'd you'd have a very strong left out feeling as I said, just like the FIIs, if you sat this one out. So if you take fresh positions. Keep your positions very light and have you know strict stop losses or even hedge your positions. That's how you should go about uh, you know playing the indices. But then there's a lot of uh, potential in the stocks because 
index wise we are about you know two two and a half about three percent away from the highs but the small cap mid cap indices are about 15 to 20 percent away so then there's still a lot of potential uh, you know in the stocks to rise uh, you know at least in the mid cap and the small cap space so let's talk about these mid and small caps where there is a potential and opportunity what would be your trading ideas um, sure. Uh, two picks. The first one is KPIT Tech. Now the tech sector has overall seen you know quite a bit of bounce, but KPIT Tech has been uh, you know a rank out performer here. The stock seen a bit of a slide uh, you know over the last uh, few sessions, but otherwise the momentum is uh, intact. The trend's positive. It's trading above its averages. And 570 was a key resistance zone. The stocks crossed it and it's trading higher. So here the immediate target would be 600 and the stop loss would be 555. The second uh, stock is from the real estate space. We like practically everything in the real estate space, you know, be it home improvement themes or, you know, financing themes or the real estate developers per se. So uh, my pick here would be Lodha. The stock seen a bit of a correction, but it's now trading above, above its 200 day moving average. The indicator setup is, you know, fairly positive. So here, an immediate target would be for 1200 and a stop loss of 1090. Uh, you can go long on Lodha with these levels. Thank you very much, uh, Kush, for joining in. This is uh, now our mid-cap mover special segment. Sonia is standing by and she's going to take us through the mid-caps that are moving around in trade. Sonia. Well, you know, it was actually a problem of plenty because there's so many stocks that are charging ahead, but I picked some of them. Fresh 52-week highs for a lot of these names that you're seeing trend Chola Investment, Tata Alexi, of course, has been the stock of the season. Terrific run over there. Lakshmi Machine Works, ABB India, a lot of these capital goods stocks are hitting fresh 52-week highs. That's one pocket. Midcap IT has come back in a big way. So just look at this. Happiest Mind is up about five, uh, 8%. LNT Tech up 4%. CoForge, Emphasis, Persistent Systems, Mindtree, you name it. And these stocks are up anywhere between about 4 to 5 odd percent apiece. Uh, on the losing side, uh, few and far between really, but I've picked up a few stocks. Uh, sugar stocks have been under a lot of pressure. Bajaj Hindustan down 12.5%. Zomato under a little bit of pressure, uh, uh, underperforming the market today. NHPC and India Bulls Real Estate are a couple of other stocks. But really, it's all about the gaining stocks and plenty of pockets doing well in the mid-cap space. Indeed, thank you very much, Sonia, for joining in with that list. Get into a break. Up next, we'll put the spotlight on a few mid-caps. Campus Activewear is a stock which is reacting uh, to a CLSA you know, brokerage note where they've increased the target price. The stock is surged 4.5%. More details on the other. Back, Hikal is a stock that is moving up on very large volumes. Today, the stock is up 8.5%. Uh, this month itself, the stock has seen a rally of close to about 30%. But if you look at the one-year chart and you would see the stock is rebounding after some serious correction. The 52-week high on Hikal was a level above 700 that it hit sometime in September. After that, the stock went all the way down to 212. That was a 52-week low, 212 on uh, Hikal uh, sometime in June. And since then, the stock has rebounded close to about 100 rupees. And today as well, it's moving up with considerable strength, extending the up move over the last few days. Another stock that we're tracking very closely is Campus Activewear. In fact, that's a stock on our mid-cap spotlight segment. Mangalam is joining in to tell us more. Mangalam. Well, the reason why Campus Activewear is on uh, the spotlight or in the spotlight is because of a couple of factors. One, they reported their results over the long weekend and that was a very strong set. Then they had the management conference call as well and thereafter brokerages are extremely positive as well. CLSA, after the numbers as well as the management commentary, has actually raised their target price from around 370 to 440 odd rupees and they've maintained their outperform rating. The reason why the target price has been raised is uh, because one, they've increased the target multiple that they have on the stock from 40 times to 45 time so that gives them an incremental uh, you know one eighth sort of upside out there and the second part is the earnings estimates themselves have been up by around three to six percent for the next couple of years uh, just to recap the numbers it was extremely strong when it when you look at it on a yoy basis but it was strong even on a quarter on quarter basis so year on year just the way we've seen with a lot of other footwear companies the revenues were up 150 percent the EBITDA actually stood out with a growth of almost 287 percent and as a result of which on a low base the net profit jumped almost 14 times but importantly and uh, the points that stood out for me in the numbers were one the average selling price increased by just around three percent and most of the sales were led by volume growth which came in at 141 odd percent and in that the product mix has been veering towards the premiumization because if you look at their overall portfolio products upwards of uh, 1500 rupees their contribution increased from 31 percent all the way up to 41 percent and products between 1050 uh, and 1500 have seen an increase from 21.1 percent to around 23.4 percent 
and products which are below 1000 rupees have actually declined in contribution from 47 percent to 35 percent so those are a couple of factors that are playing out and that is what's supporting their margins itself the bigger macro trigger for campus active wear which sells mostly sports footwear is that india's sports and athleisure market penetration as a pr proportion of the total market is just sub six percent and the same for you know countries like us and china are upwards of 40 and 50 percent so that indicates a big potential of growth out there even as uh, you know this market sees a lot more penetration and this is something that other footwear companies have been telling us as well in terms of bata which is talking about the sneakerization of uh, the world right now as far as footwear is concerned and that is what explains the kind of up move that we're seeing on campus Thank you very much, uh, Manglam, for explaining that 140% year-on-year volume growth and plus the company is headed towards premiumization, which is aiding the margin improvement as well. But let's talk about Apollo Tires. It was a big mover yesterday. Today, it's added another 4% scaling, a fresh 52-week high. Sonia is here to tell us more. Sonia? Well, thanks a lot for that. Apollo Tires indeed has been surging to new highs. Uh, there are two brokerage notes that I'm going to refer to. One of them is coming in from HDFC Securities, where they have raised their target price on Apollo tyres to 260 from 229 earlier. Now they speak about how the market share for Apollo tyres has gone up, both in the India as well as in the Europe business. They've invested in R&D in brand building and expanding their distribution network. And they've recently also restructured their European business. So what's happened in the European business Redistein is that post the restructuring, the uh, operational performance has improved and the margins, which were just about 8% in FY20, have sharply increased to 18% in FY22. Apart from that, they expect the input costs that are likely to peak in Q2 and that will be another relief. But the other brokerage note which has come through is from Nomura, where there's a big target price upgrade. Earlier, their target price was 262. Now they have raised it all the way to 322 and they maintain a buy. They say that because of the fall in natural rubber and crude prices, it will be a big positive on the margin front. Every 10% drop in NR and crude derivatives can improve the margins by 170 basis points. Overall, positive notes coming through for Apollo tyres and the stock is sitting at a fresh high. Back to you. Thank you very much for that. Happiest Minds is another stock to be tracking. This is a mid-cap IT company. Stock is up about 8% in trade, so it's outperforming the Nifty IT index, which is up 1.5%. Earlier, ICSA Security initiated coverage on Happiest Minds uh, with an ad rating. Their target price is 1,075, so the stock has already gone to levels of ICSA Security's target price. Uh, the stock is trading at a premium valuation of 52 times forward multiple, ICICI Securities says. And that, according to ICICI Security, is that one, this company has the potential to grow much faster than the industry, two and a half times the growth rate of mid-cap IT companies. Two, although the company is smaller in size, say compared to a Mindtree, L&T, Infotech, uh, it's still able to sustain margins similar to the mid-cap IT companies and it's higher than global peers. And thirdly, there is potential non-linear upside to earnings led by acquisition-related growth and scale. So I say securities accept, uh, expect strong growth and margins for happiest minds. They foresee a revenue growth of 25% for the next three years. They see margins being maintained at 23% as well. And they believe that the company has the potential to achieve its vision of $1 billion by 20, FI31. Uh, so that's the update coming in on Happiest Minds. Get into a break, but as we do that, here is a quick reminder for our viewers. It's that time of the year again. Money Control Pro's financial freedom offer is back with added benefits. Get a Money Control Pro subscription at net zero cost by claiming exciting offers worth 1,500 rupees from our partner brands. Grab the benefits now on Money Control app or website. One of the big movers today is Arthi Drugs. The stock is up 12%, surging after DGTR has recommended a continuation of the anti-dumping duties on the imports of a key antibiotic from China. Earlier today, we had a chat with Adish Patil, the CFO of Arthi Drugs, to help us understand what the impact is going to be on Arthi Drugs and what prompted this move by the DGTR. Listen in. We have a backward integration for this particular molecule. So we also manufacture the inter -VJ. And that is the reason why we have, we have asked for uh, anti-dumping duty across the chain, means the API uh, and the intermediate of the API, and even one step before that. And uh, in this particular uh, case, all three are being considered, I mean, have been recommended. And now MOS will uh, issue the final notification in due course. Uh, 
uh, definitely, as you said, correctly said that eight to eight point five percent of our revenues are coming from this molecule. Uh, our capacities are around uh, seventy to eighty metric tons per month. Uh, so definitely, uh, you know, bare minimum around uh, four to five CR, and plus if you can get additional sale, and we are quite confident that uh, because of anti-dumping duty, even in the intermediate, we will get additional market share as well in India. As of now, we might be having some, uh, somewhere in uh, 60s market share of India. So that can definitely go up now significantly. Uh, last year, as you're asking around, say around 300 to 400 tons, kind of uh, intermediate plus uh, final API uh, came into Indian market. And for us, in, uh, domestic is the only market. And uh, we can easily manufacture uh, more than 100 tons per month uh, if required, because we have a spare facility also for this particular molecule, which can take care of entire India's uh, demand if required. Another stock which is on our radar is Techno Electric. Well, this one's won a big order, 1,455 crore. And this is the second order that the company has won in the recent past. On 13th August, the company informed the exchanges about an order win worth 680 crore. So totaling more than 2,000 crore of order wins for Techno Electric in the last couple of days. And that's what's gotten the street very excited. Earlier today, we also had a chat with the company's MD, Mr. P.P. Gupta. And he said that this particular order, which they've announced today of 1,455 crore, from Rajasthan will be completed by December 2024. But the industry has now started seeing a pickup in order. So he did say that in the last two or three years, the big order wins were missing, but now they seem to be coming back. The company is targeting an order intake of 3,000 to 3,500 crores for this year. Their unexecuted order book is 3,200 crores. They are looking at about a 25% top line growth. So for FY23, their revenue guidance is close to 1,300 crore rupees. But by FY25, they are looking at revenues of close to 2,000 crore rupees, which means it would be double compared to the FY22 numbers. And they have an ongoing buyback right now, 160 crore. But their plan is that in the next three years, including the current year, they will return 500 crores by way of uh, capital to the shareholders. But on that note, listen to what the MD, P.P. Gupta, told us earlier. For the last uh, three, four years, we have been uh, starved of uh, large value orders, quality orders, and a uh, lot of uh, slowdowns in our uh, industry, uh, which is coming back now, and uh, it is as good as pre-election years now. So we are, uh, whatever growth we lost in last three, four years, we want to make up in next three years. We want to see our double line growing, uh, top line growing to double, uh, from the present level, and we anticipate our order intake this year will be no less than 3,000 to 3,500 CR, out of which 1,900 CR we have already achieved. 23, we are targeting a top line of around 1,250 to 1,300 CR. Uh, present, the last year we closed with around uh, 1,050 CR. Uh, as against 850 CR a year before, our buyback is already on for uh, around 160 CR uh, at, at the moment. And we intend paying out 500 CR to our investors over the next three years, which includes 180 CR this year, and a similar amount in next two years, uh, additionally, in the form of dividends and buy tax. It will continue. Okay, that's uh, the word coming in from Techno Electric for the markets. The banks are trying to play a catch up. Since morning, the banks have been underperforming while the Nifty and the Sensex were up half a percent. The Nifty Bank was just up, it was either flat or just up 0.1 percent. But now you can see the PSU banks trying to play a catch up. The Nifty PSU banking index is up 1.3 percent. And names like Bank of Baroda, PNB, State Bank of India, you can see a surge coming through in names Canara Bank, Union Bank, a couple of the other mid-cap banks, which have moved up in the last 30 minutes. But as we wrap up on this show, Mid-Cap Radar, we leave you with some market opinion that we got from Gary Schlossberg of Wells Fargo Investment Institute to understand how to invest in the markets in these volatile times. Listen in and your stocks when we return. Very impressive rally, but we're still uh, calling it more of a bear market rally. I mean, the, the market has gone farther, higher than we would have anticipated. 
but it still has to be tested, notwithstanding uh, comments that we just heard. Uh, we see a real possibility of a recession sometime during the second half of the year, perhaps later rather than sooner, but um, uh, a lot of yellow flags out there. Uh, and uh, to us, that means that the earnings uh, outlook will be tested, earnings performance will be tested. Uh, there is hope, and again, another test, that the Federal Reserve will temper its rate increases, perhaps reverse them early. Uh, a lot depends on the inflation outlook. Uh, from what I know about the Indian market, I would stay constructive on those domestic-oriented companies. Uh, uh, the domestic economy seems to be holding up well, getting support from that drop in oil prices. We are seeing uh, exports holding up reasonably well, too. The international environment, however, uh, we think is souring. In fact, our view continues to be uh, that uh, the outlook overseas in Europe and some of the other developed economies uh, and even in emerging markets, if in fact the dollar uh, strength uh, is rekindled again, uh, would suggest a more difficult international environment between now and the end of the year. But they, we see opportunities in the uh, domestic market in India uh, based on that tailwind from economic growth.